So in the two months since Jurgen Klopp announced his Liverpool departure, there had only been one name really to take over the hot seat. That of course was Xabi Alonso. However, yesterday we had got the news that Alonso would like to stay put at Bayer Leverkusen and that the Reds would not be waiting around. Since this news emerged, there is another man who has shot up the top of the shortlist and looks likely now to be the next Liverpool manager, that of course being Ruben Amarim. In today's video, we are going to deep dive into the man and explain why he could be perfect for Liverpool. But first, before we do so, please do hit that like button and subscribe button for daily Liverpool content. So before we get into Ruben's tactics and strengths, I just want to start by giving you a brief background on the man. Like Alonso, Amarim did have a career in the game as a player, playing for Benfica and Braga. During his career, he won 11 trophies, playing for those two clubs, and even made it into Portugal's 2014 World Cup team. Whilst Amarim wasn't a standout player, he was very versatile and had a good knack for tactics, which has obviously helped him fast-track into management just two years after hanging up his boots. Amarim retired as a player at the young age of 32 and essentially jumped headfirst into coaching, managing Casa Pina in the third tier of Portuguese football and actually was suspended as he didn't have the correct coaching badges. However, 2019 was a game changer for him. He took over Braga's reserve team and in just three months stepped in for the sacked Ricardo Sampinto as head coach of the main team. Believe it or not, he won the first title by defeating Porto in the domestic cup final three weeks later. But wait, there's more. Amarim's stint at Braga was brief, only three months, but he didn't leave because he was sacked. In the league, his record was nearly flawless, with only one draw and 10 wins out of 11 matches. And these games were in fact against good sides, with triumphs over the big three in Portugal, Benfica, FC Porto and Sporting Lisbon. This dramatic turnaround at Braga didn't go unnoticed, leading Amarim to Sporting Lisbon in March 2020. Sporting Lisbon shelled out 10 million euros for him, making it the third highest fee ever paid for a manager, and by God was it worth it. In his debut full season, Amarim did something that not many expected, and that was shatter the long-standing duopoly of Benfica and FC Porto, clinching Sporting Lisbon's first league title in nearly two decades. On top of that, he secured yet another domestic cup victory in the same season. The following campaign saw him leading the team to a respectable second-place league finish and snagging yet another domestic cup, though the following season didn't meet expectations, with Sporting Lisbon landing in fourth place without any silverware. However, Amarim bounced back, steering the team to the top of the league table, and at the time of recording this video, Sporting currently leads the table by one point ahead of Benfica and seven clear of FC Porto, having played a game less than Benfica. Sporting's championship winning season was marked by a rock-solid defence with the fewest goals conceded and an attack that was effective as it was thrilling. His approach didn't solely rely on experienced stars, instead he placed a significant emphasis on developing young talent, perfectly balancing it with the wisdom of seasoned players, which would bode well for Liverpool. Now let's get into the nitty gritty and discuss Amarim's tactics. Ruben's go-to formation is undeniably the 3-4-3, the same that Conte did when whilst at Chelsea, and since then this formation has gained popularity within the Premier League. Amarim has applied this lineup in every game so far this season, favouring the 3-4-3 for its ability to generate offensive overloads in wide areas and facilitate seamless transitions to a 5-4-1 defence. This brings us to a crucial aspect of Amarim's approach. Just as in their 2020 championship winning season, when they boasted the league's stingiest defence, this season Sporting still remains a fortress. Though Sporting Lisbon boasts only the third strongest defence in the league, trailing Porto and Benfica with 25 goals conceded, the expected goals against XG paints a vastly different picture. Sporting Lisbon leads the league with a low 19.2 XGA, signalling their ability to significantly limit the opposition's chances to score. The success of their defensive strategy ties back to their preferred 3-4-3 formation, so let's dive a little bit deeper. Whenever Sporting loses possession, they transition into either a 5-4-1 or a 5-2-3 formation, adopting a compact and narrow defensive stance. This clever positioning pushes their opponents to the flanks, minimizing direct threats to their goals. This tactic not only showcases the strategic depth of their 3-4-3 formation, 
but also highlights the disciplined execution by the players to maintain such a compact defence. As soon as the ball is sent to the wings, Sporting's team springs into action, aggressively seeking to regain possession. This is key, every player, including the forwards, is expected to play an active role defensively. They must track back and reinforce the defensive line, particularly in wide areas, ensuring the team remains solid across the pitch. Now hold on, given the emphasis on a narrow defensive block and deploying five defenders, you might be tempted to label Amarim as pragmatic, defensive first manager, which is not really true. However, here's a twist for you. Amarim and Jurgen Klopp actually share a lot more in common than you might think. Amarim employs an intense man-to-man -man or hybrid pressing scheme. His centre-backs are often seen advancing into midfield, eliminating any space for the opposition's playmakers. This strategy is facilitated by Amarim's preference for a high defensive line, drawing a parallel to Klopp's approach. Regardless of the opponent, whether it's a team fighting relegation or a high-stakes cup match against Benfica, Amarim's sporting is absolutely relentless in its press. Lisbon's pressing game in the Portuguese Premier Liga is not just about intensity, it's also highly efficient, with the team averaging 11 passes per defensive action this season. This statistic is a testament to their aggressive pressing strategy. However, the effectiveness of their approach becomes even clearer when you look at the following numbers. Sporting has achieved 225 high turnovers, ranking them third in the league. Even more impressive in their ability to capitalise on these opportunities, scoring 8 goals from 41 shot ending turnovers, the highest in Portugal is peak Gagan Press. But what happens when Sporting Lisbon has the ball? Well, it's safe to say that Amarim's approach to possession and chance creation is equally intriguing. Sporting employs a possession-based style, preferring to build up play in a 3-2-5 setup. This structure allows them to maintain control and systematically break down the opposition's defence, showcasing a blend of tactical discipline and creative flair. This aspect of their game adds another layer to their complex tactical identity. Demonstrating that Amarim's sporting is as potent with the ball as they are without it. They take their time in the build-up, moving the ball among the centre-backs and the double pivot, even bringing the goalkeeper into the mix as an extra player during the phase. They're fourth in the league for the number of passes attempted, but it's their focus on short passes that really shows their patience with the ball. Sporting has made 6,403 short passes with a completion rate of 91.1%. When you compare it, their playstyle is noticeably slower and more detailed than many other teams in the league. Now from tactics to another Another crucial part is ability to manage and motivate players. Amarim is renowned across Portugal for his larger-than-life presence. He's a natural leader, a catalyst for change, oozing charisma and conviction. The kind of person others gravitate towards and want to follow. His ability to communicate effectively, tailoring his approach to meet individual needs, is what sets him apart. Crucially, Amarim has demonstrated an incredible ability to balance egos, blending seasoned professionals with emerging talents to forge a united team. His open and forthright manner has won his admiration from players, colleagues and the press. In the pressure cooker atmosphere of Liverpool, such man management prowess could be vital. So Liverpool fans, what are your thoughts on Ruben Amarim? And do you think he'll be the perfect manager for our football club now that Xabi Alonso doesn't look like he's going to be taking over the reins? Let me know all of your thoughts on Ruben down there in the comment section below. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button for daily Liverpool content. Thank you guys, and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.